Hey guys, welcome to the Bolt for Life podcast. Today we're here with Christina Pate, Doctor of Physical Therapy. We're here uh, at the, did you say Vident Health? Vident Health. Vident yeah. Health. Uh, Christina's gonna talk to us about what they do here today. I met Christina probably three or four years yeah. ago yeah. at the gym, and we have a lot of mutual friends, and I remember when you were training for your competition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's in incredible shape, she inspires me. But I'm really excited to hear about what they do here at the clinic and what Christina has to share with us today. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the Bolt for Life All podcast. Right, thank you. Glad <laughs> to be here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us here at your yeah. clinic. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you guys do here? Uh, well, here we're outpatient clinic, but we're a special outpatient clinic here in Wallace because it's such a rural community and we're pretty much the only outpatient clinic. So we see anything that can walk in the door, anything under the sun. So we get a bunch of patients that have neurological issues from having a stroke, um, patients that are quadriplegic, to we get orthopedic issues with athletes, total knees, shoulder replacements, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So any type of surgery. Um, we see pediatrics here as well. So we see little kids. So yeah, anything under the sun. So we gotta be prepared right. for that. Um, but we also see patients, like I was telling you, with chronic pain, so right. chronic back pain, um, chronic neck pain, any type of, or even shoulder, any type of previous injury that's mm -hmm. led to the RSD or any type of chronic pain syndrome. So talking about chronic pain, like, um, can you talk to us about it? I mean, obviously I've shared my story with chronic pain, you know, my history with contact sports and powerlifting. Uh, you give me a little bit of an assessment here. So you <laughs> yeah. Have an idea yeah. Of some of my, oh, yeah. My issues. Um, what's, what's your general take on dealing with patients with chronic pain? Uh, usually when I deal with patients with chronic pain, you have to take into aspect the psychosocial aspect of it. Um, so not only are you dealing with like an acute injury, it's just that physiological aspect that people are usually focused on. With chronic pain, patients have been dealing with it so long, it becomes part of their mantra, part of their life. So they tend to perseverate on that pain issue. Uh, so it becomes like a psych psychosocial, gets in their head. Uh, so sometimes that perception of pain can be actually a misconception. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll have chronic low back pain, but their body perceives it differently and their brain perceives it differently. So they right. become hypersensitive or hyposensitive, like too sensitive to touch, or they can't really feel anything in that area. Yeah. So that's the difficulty with chronic pain, kind of getting through the psychological aspect mm -hmm. of it too. So not only just kind of treating the pain, but treating the psychological aspect of it, because it's been going on for so long, so then you get so many other compounding factors coming in. So usually it leads to other issues down the chain or up the chain. Mm -hmm. so like it's been explained to me and in my experience, it's like it's not normal for the body to have pain all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's no way that a person can, at least in my case, could go unaffected by that. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And I know the thing that I'm so excited about today here with you is to be able to eliminate any of the other things, you know, because the chronic pain is chronic pain. The RSD, yeah. which I have, is, is the RSD. <laughs> but... Any, I always feel like any little thing that I can improve on or help is gonna help the overall. Yeah, typically with the tools we're about to talk about, they go into um, how it affects patients with chronic pain as well because mm -hmm. you get that fear avoidance behavior. Right. So, you know, patients start to avoid moving yeah. because yeah. of that and then that just leads to a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. So when you're not moving, everything else is just gonna stiffen up. You're gonna have impaired movement patterns. So all your body's gonna start moving incorrectly. Right. So a lot of times we just introduce basic movements, mm -hmm. even if it's just let's start with calf raises, let's mm -hmm. teach your body it's okay to move and start basic from there and build on, all right, let's move a little more, let's yeah. move a little more, you know, teaching your body, okay, it's okay, we mm -hmm. can move. <laughs> yeah. So kind of meeting so. the patient where they are, finding what they can do and just moving forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I can relate because like you assess my shoulder, my shoulder's in pretty rough shape. I think that's a fair assessment. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> my challenge has been for the last 15 years, well, I need to walk, you know, like it's hard. I can totally relate to that whole idea. Like my body's screaming at me, like this is a challenge just to do basic mm -hmm. stuff. So it's easy to let maintenance on my shoulder go. It's easy to do this and do that. Oh, you know? yeah. So I'm excited for you to get me back on track. Oh, yeah, we'll <laughs> see. We'll try. So, so what's so some of the stuff you have here? So today we're going to be talking about um, three various types of tools that can be used in adjunct for physical therapy. Uh, one of them is called rock blades. Um, you don't have to necessarily use rock blades. They're a brand of what's called instrument assisted tissue manipulation. So, it's like so using instrument, instrument to work on tissue manipulation. Okay. Um, so a lot of therapists we use it to save our hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then you can also think about the blade will help give you 
biggest, bigger surface area if you need it, and you can yeah. change the amount of pressure. So just by changing the position of the blade. So the one I'm holding right now kind of looks like brass knuckles. Does, Big it? set of brass knuckles. It's going to hit me if I yeah. don't get my shoulder <laughs> so, <in shape. laughs> so at, you, Normally it'll have a concave side that's smooth, and then you have a concave side that's a little bit sharper okay. to change that perception of depth. Oh, right? wow. Yeah, so then we have the small concavities here that'll kind of work on knuckles or get mm -hmm. around joints. So they're, all of these little concavities serve a purpose. So the main thing is using instruments to help improve tissue mobility. Um, so you have all various types of instruments. Gotcha. We have the brass knuckle ones. The brass knuckle. We have the mohawk, <laughs> which is literally looks like a mohawk. It does look like a mohawk. Yeah. With so the this handle. one, yeah, this one you can get around joints here. Okay. Um, little concavity here, and again, it has a sharp edge and a dull edge to change that perception of depth. Okay. Um, like how do you assess? You how would you would use that? Is it kind of a patient yeah. by patient issue? Or? Yeah. Normally, uh, you can use it on any type of patient that mm -hmm. comes in because what you're doing is you just assess the patient. You do a screening of how the patient's moving, look at where they're limited, where they're painful, assess that area, and then you uh, go not only on that joint, but you ripple above and below to affect the fascia above and below, so everything's affected. But this tool, the mohawk, the brass knuckles, and then we have a fiberglass one too. Oh, wow. So same concavity. Okay. But you just use them basically to manipulate the tissue. Um, to increase tissue mobility, but we'll go a little more in depth than all that, like yeah. with all the tools. Okay. But you get your instrument assisted tools. Cool. Then you have your cups. We use what's called the silicone cupping method. Um, you have all kinds of different cupping methods. You have the mm -hmm. fire cupping. So all if you've probably seen that. Yeah, say, yeah, yeah, with the, yeah. the light so on fire. These are <laughs> just the simple silicone suction cup method. So it looks like a suction cup. Yep, it literally looks like a little plunger, mm -hmm. a baby plunger. Yep. yep. <laughs> so and I'll, we'll go over the different techniques, but again used for pain mitigation, okay, used to improve tissue mobility. Um, you can even have, you can be impaired movement without pain too. Mm -hmm. So we can use an improved movement, decrease pain. Nice. So you get your cups and then our fun rock tape. So you have a basically kinesiology tape, mm -hmm. but rock tape has a little extra stretch on their tape and their blend of how they make it is a little different than normal K-tape. So you see it a lot on like CrossFit games, yeah. you've seen it in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So a lot of athletes use it, but we use it for a regular patients as well. You don't have to be an athlete to Very use cool. tape. Yeah. Right. So all these play a part as an adjunct with therapy. Mm -hmm. You don't really try to use them alone. You use them in conjunction part with of therapy. Piece of the yeah, puzzle. yeah. Part of the piece of the puzzle to help improve movement and then you need to fine tune that movement after you use the tools. Right. Yeah. So you get things moving and then you need to reinforce yeah, that. You gotta with, reinforce yeah. that movement pattern play a part in it. Very yeah. cool. Well, we're excited to let people know this stuff is out here and, and what we can do with it. Yeah. So all three of them, like I was telling you, we'll go over kind of the main things. So three main effects that all these tools have. You have the pain mitigation, so mm -hmm. you help decrease pain. Then you have a decompressive, like a biomechanical lifting effect. Then you also have a neurochemical or neurosensory effect from the tools. So with the pain mitigation, you probably heard of the pain gate theory. Right. So yeah. We've talked so about that before. Normally, you have what's called nociceptors. Okay. Um, they travel on basically slow pathways to your brain. When you stimulate, use these tools to help stimulate other mechanoreceptors in the skin and the interstitium um, around the skin. It gets kind of they travel on faster nerve pathways. So what you're doing is you're using the tools to help kind of beat those pain pathways. So these mechanoreceptors, when you stimulate them, they just send that signal faster to the brain. So they're kind of cutting off or tuning down that pain signal. So you're decreasing the perception of pain from your brain to that area. Right. So that's decreasing pain, which is going to improve movement in itself. Mm -hmm. So you get movement improvement from pain decreasing. Nice. So that's the pain mitigation or decreasing pain with all three of these tools. Then you have that biomechanical lifting or decompression effect. So if you imagine like a sandwich that's smushed or smashed mm -hmm. together, you're not gonna have very good movement. Everything's kind of stuck together. So your tissues, when you have pain in an area or just impaired movement, your tissues tend to kind of bind together, mm -hmm. all right, and they get stuck. So when you use the tape or the cups or the instrument assisted tools, you actually cause a lift. So you get that piece of the sandwich separated mm -hmm. or those tissues separated. So then you have improved glide so improved movement of the tissues, muscles, the skin, interstitium, so everything's improved. With that decompression, you have space for the fluid to flow. Okay. So when you have swelling, mm -hmm. usually areas that are injured or areas that have impaired movement are gonna have stagnation of fluid. Mm -hmm. So 
your lymph fluid, your blood, everything's going to be stagnant. This allows it to flow all right, back into your lymphatic system so all those toxins can get pushed out, flow through the lymphatic system and moved out. So then you're going to have decreased edema or decreased swelling in that area, which causes pain as well mm -hmm. and impairs the movement. So that decompressive effect has multiple factors, improved movement pattern of the tissues and improved fluid dynamics. You get all that nasty junk out basically. Yeah, 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 clean, yeah. It out. clean it out. And like it's been explained to me with my surgeries is the scar tissue just grows, it just yeah. grows. Mm -hmm. Especially around incisions, your scar tissue, if you don't take care of it, it's just gonna come out and cause adhesions, what we call adhesions. So it kind of grows out. So all those muscles, the tissues around there mm -hmm. kind of just get yeah. adhesed down literally to that area. So then you can get pitting, mm -hmm. all right, where the scars will pit in and those tissues literally just get pushed in and they can't move. Right. Or it doesn't even have to pit, it just limits the movement in all directions around the incision. Mm -hmm. So all these tools will help improve that scar mobility because you're decompressing it. And I can speak from experience, I, I can say already, it's much better to get that stuff moving early on than waiting years and having it come and the pain of it ripping oh, apart. Oh yeah, yeah. That. I've definitely, that yeah. Too, so so this yep. is awesome. you gotta wait for that incision to fully heal first. Right. And then we can go Start to town around it. it. But to begin with, you can go, around the tissue, the tissues mm -hmm. around it, if, when that scar is healing. Same thing uh, with the tape. So you can even go around the tissue, because when that incision's healed, you can actually put the tape right on it. Wow. But when it's not healed, you just go to the tissues around it. So you're helping the healing so you're helping, around yep, the Yep, you're helping the healing get... around it, and you're helping keep those tissues around that scar moving as well. Nice, so, yeah, nice, yeah. very cool. Yeah, so you got the pain factor that we can control, the decompression, then that neurosensory input I was telling mm -hmm. you about. So the skin and what we call the interstitium, which is kind of between the skin and all the fascia and muscle, those are the biggest organs in your body. Right. Yeah, so they have a huge input to your brain. So when you stimulate that area by putting tape on it, the cup on it, or the instruments on it, you're getting that overflow, that information to your brain, mm -hmm. to that area. Because when you're in pain, we were talking about earlier, yeah. you get a smudging effect. So like right. a road map, mm -hmm. that area, that road is smudged to the painful area. So your brain doesn't send that signal to that area correctly. Right. When we use the tools, it basically just desmudges mm -hmm. that neural pathway. So now you have an open pathway and clearer pathway to the brain, brain muscle connection. So then you get improved movement pattern from there. Because right. with that chronic pain or pain, that fear avoidance, so you're mm -hmm. not moving. So now we're saying, oh, okay, here's my input to that area. So now I can actually move a little better. Kind of so clean up your it. movement pattern basically with right. this, that neurosensory input. So it's pretty cool how these tools provide cool. all yeah. that, like the brain to body connection. Mm -hmm. So you tap into that. So, yeah. Very cool. My, um, a good friend of mine, Ed Cohen, the power lifter, when we did an interview with him years ago, he wrote an article for Muscle and Fitness called The 10 Second Rep. And basically what he did was he came up with just a quick way of doing a rep, but you do two seconds here, two seconds here, two seconds here. And the whole idea is to re kind of program those neural mm -hmm. pathways yeah. so you get through that movement. He used it at rehabbing from his injury with his knee and things like that. Um, but it's so cool to hear the same thing and how I could use that with this technique yeah, yeah, and all of definitely. those things together. Yeah, you, know? you gotta clean up that neurosensory pathway because it's all, like I said, smudged or fogged right. with pain or especially with chronic pain. Mm -hmm. You have that, chron that fog is thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and with this, we kind of clean that fog up so you have that pathway going to that area. Right, and if I'm doing it without these interventions, I'm just kind of reinforcing the ones that are already working. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really touching the ones that are fogged up. Yeah, like yeah, you definitely. Said. So yeah. this will help open up those areas. Cool. Yeah, and you get a good neurochemical effect too, because ah. in certain enzymes are released that help with healing. Oh wow! So like when we do the cupping, you'll see you get the red marks. Mm -hmm. Even with the instrument assisted. You know how grassed and back in the day, you would oh, always yeah. see people come out bruised? Yep. That You're not supposed to be bruised. Ah. You're supposed to have a little bit of kind of red pink, okay? okay? Um, if you bruise too much, you've done too much. Ah, you don't want to okay. hurt, you want to heal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that, that kind of pink red area is where you're getting a histamine response. You're releasing what we call heme oxygenase one. So those enzymes are released and they help kind of block, they're an anti-inflammatory, so they help block the inflammation in that area and prevent inflammation from coming out of the area. Cool. So there's a lot of things that I feel a little that. more comfortable now about you using those yes. tools on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, especially when you see this bad boy yeah, coming at you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, we always warn patients, hey, feel it, touch it. Yeah. We're gonna use this on you so they're not scared of it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. You get and then you do what we call graded yeah. exposure. So you'll, I will go over like there's different techniques. Wow. So you have with the instrument assisted, mm -hmm. before I even use it on anybody, you know, like I said, I let them touch it, mm. feel it, hey, here's what it is, it's intimidating. Yeah. Then I'll start off with what's called like a feathering technique. 
So feathering is just literally what it sounds like. You take the tool, barely touch their skin, and feather around the area. Mm -hmm. So they get used to it, graded exposure. But then there's also a purpose to feathering. Feathering stimulates um, some of the nerve receptors that will help block your pain. Uh -huh. So you kind of get that pain mitigation right away. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like when you hit your elbow and you rub it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, same to, yeah. concept. So oh, you're feathering cool. to get them used to it and mm -hmm. to pain mitigate. So then from feathering, you have what's called uh, more of a kind of tone down the muscle technique, mm -hmm. okay? Down regulation is what we call it. So then you would go a little deeper into the muscle. And we have a grading system we use. We don't have to go all on that. But right. you just kind of go a little deeper, and it's a slow movement. Okay. And what that does, it stimulates certain mechanoreceptors that will help downregulate or decrease tone in the muscle. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so you can actually use this blade to decrease tone, improve pain. Then you can also upregulate. So you take the tool, and you move that fast at different vectors, mm -hmm. and it stimulates a different set of mechanoreceptors. So you have all kinds of different mechanoreceptors in the skin and the fascia. So when you go fast at different vectors, that'll stimulate the mechanoreceptors that'll increase tone in your muscle. So hey, let's work. Mm -hmm. So if that muscle's asleep after surgery or anything like that, right. we can wake it up and tell it, let's kick in, let's mm -hmm. work a little more. So you can downregulate, like decrease tone. Mm -hmm. You can upregulate, make a muscle work more, and you can use a feathering technique to kind of decrease pain and use it as graded exposure yeah. so somebody's not so afraid of it. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm excited. Cool, yeah. So all kinds of different techniques. Well, I'm really excited to jump into this. Now, for somebody listening in any part of the country or the world or wherever, if they wanted to get this level of treatment, how would they go about doing that? I mean, you know a ton about this stuff. What would you suggest someone do? Normally, if you're looking to get any of these techniques, look around, call some physical therapy clinics and ask, or do you have anyone there that's instrument assisted certified or cupping certified, taping certified? Um, that way you'll have a clinician that is certified in the area and kind of really knows what they're doing with the instruments. Because, you know, you hear that when somebody gains knowledge, it can be dangerous at the same time. So you don't want somebody just rubbing on you with a tool that really doesn't know what they're doing their technique. So just call a clinic, all right, and ask, do you have anyone there that's instrument assisted certified that using instruments, cupping certified or tape certified? Um, and they can work with you. And usually most clinics nowadays will have someone that's at least taping certified. Cupping's becoming fairly more popular, especially the quick, easy suction cup technique. Um, so you might not find many people that are cupping certified, but just call the clinic. If you're interested in going to a clinic, call and ask ahead of time, do you have someone that's cupping certified or that's blade certified? There's even massage therapists out there now that are getting like certified in these areas because it kind of goes in with their techniques too. Yeah. So but just call and ask. Cool. And then, I mean, like you stressed the importance of following it up too with, yeah. with therapy, with exercise, you know, reinforcing mm -hmm. those. That's why I would pathways. suggest going to a specialist. Yeah. So that way you're not just getting the technique and being sent home. You're shown the corrective exercise to reinforce that new neural pathway and that new movement pattern. So, I mean, you're reintroducing new movement. If you work on your shoulder, like I was saying, if you're here, and we get you here, your joint has no clue how to move in this new space. So we have to teach you how to move correctly. So yeah, following up with corrective exercise is key. You can't just do this in itself. Yeah. Means I'm gonna have more work to do after this. <laughs> yes, definitely, oh yeah, definitely have more exercise. So for that person that's sitting on the couch and is just depressed and is in constant pain and you touched on it a little bit earlier, but what would you say to that person sitting on the couch that just feels hopeless? The first step is try to get into a clinic, <laughs> you know, a physical therapy clinic with someone who can teach you how to move in a safe way. Yeah, it's safe to move. We can show you how to start, you know, baby steps. Because yeah. a, a lot of people with chronic pain get in that vicious cycle and it le leads to fear, fear of moving. So then they become sedentary. Then that leads to a whole slew of different complications. So normally, I would suggest please try to come into a clinic um, we, most clinics will ease you in to movement. Um, you don't have to be afraid. We'll work with you, go baby steps and basic movement patterns first and then get you up. Our main goal is to get you where you can function, not where we're getting you where you can run a marathon or lift weights. Like we're just getting you back to where you can do your normal basic activities, whether you are an athlete or whether you're someone, you know, who just wants to get back to being able to walk to their mailbox and back or you know, cook, stand long enough to cook. So everyone's different in their goals and our objective is to get you to your level of performance and function. 
insurance can be crazy and trying to navigate that whole scene or people with financial limitations or things like that. I mean, what could you suggest for them to get in a place and work with somebody like you? Normally with patients that have high co-pays or some patients might not even have insurance, we try to work with those patients. Um, so even if the, the a doctor sent them and it says three times a week on the script or anything, we can work with that patient. It's up to our discretion and whatever the patient feels is best for them that they can handle. So I've had patients that have $80 co-pays and I usually, hey, whatever works best for you, if I can see you maybe once every other week or two weeks, whatever works best, and I'll try my, I'll give them a home program. So we go over as much as we can in the eval. As far as corrective exercise, I can show them how to tape, do basic taping technique on their own. Um, so, and you can buy um, K-tape, you can buy like regular kinesio tape, normally in a lot of the like Walgreens, CVS, even Dix has it. Um, rock tape, Dix covers, and then like Amazon. So I'll tell patients, hey, look, I'll show you how to tape, and all the tape comes with instructional pamphlets. Mm -hmm. So I'll usually hand them one of those and say, here, this is, this is all the contraindications for the tape. This is the purpose of the tape. Here's different taping techniques, but I'll show them from my assessment what's best for them, show them how to tape so they can carry that over if they can't make it in here, but once every two or three weeks. And I'll show them those corrective exercises, and when they come back their next visit, I'll give them more and more to do at home. So the best thing to kind of reiterate to patients or people who are seeking treatment but are afraid because of the cost, this is your movement, this is your body, this is affecting your lifestyle. So try not to let that hinder trying to at least seek out treatment and see how the treatment affects you because we can make a big difference in an eval, one treat. We can evaluate, assess, see where you're moving wrong and teach you corrective exercises. And I can even show you how to tape on your own if the tape is going to be beneficial for you. So I mean, it's your movement, it's your life. Yeah. Um, every state's going to be different with insurance. Some, some clinics are cash based, some clinics are insurance based. Um, but every clinic should try to work with that patient. So whatever PT is gonna to try to their best to work with that patient and fit whatever fits their schedule or whatever they can afford. We're in North Carolina right now. Do you need a referral from your doctor to come in and see physical? In North Carolina, we're direct access. So that means you can come in. You don't necessarily have to have a doctor's order. You come in, we'll do the eval, and then we usually ask who's your primary care or who is a doctor you see. And then we'll send that eval off to the doctor. That way they're informed and they can sign off and send back. But yeah, we're direct access, so you don't need a doctor's order. We just need to know if you do have a doctor and we'll fax that off to the doctor. Yeah. Great, that's awesome. I th I'm just the more available this is to people, the better. Yeah, they even have home programs out there now, um, computer systems where we can actually email you um, your home program. So like we can call. I've even had patients say, hey, I'm doing a lot better with this. Is there any other exercise that I can kind of progress to from this one? and I can give them an idea and email them, kind of the exercise, and then we keep in touch. Hey, how's that one feeling? Is that good? All right, because, but it's gotta be a progression from that basic exercise, not a whole different exercise. But yeah, so we keep in touch through phone and email. So. That's awesome, whatever it takes, and it's worth it. It's worth it to be able to move as well as we possibly can. Yes, so now we're gonna put all that into effect and let's see how it actually works on your shoulder, cool. okay? So first, we're gonna see how that shoulder's moving, okay? okay. See where your limits are, where your pain is, then we're going to use the tools to try to clean up that movement and we'll reassess, see how it's moving and how it feels after. Okay. okay? Great. And then I can do a little taping technique to kind of reinforce that for three to five days after. So awesome. yeah. All right. Cool. So what I'll do, I'll let you stand. Okay. okay? All right. And then face Oops. that way. Okay. Yep. All right. Because it's your left shoulder. This is my good side. Right ah, there you go. <laughs> so raise this arm. What we're going to do is look at all the motions of the shoulder. So first we'll look at overhead movement. So we're going to look at flexion. So raise that head. Raise my yep. left hand up mm -hmm. over my head. There you go. So he has a little bit of limited motion on that left side. He can't even make it past his ear. So let's compare that. Turn this way. Okay. Let's look at your right. Go that way. There. Now let's see your right. So I'm raising my All right hand the way up back. over my head. And then see how you can't even, well, for people that are watching, his arm is actually getting past his ear on the right. So definitely limit on the left compared to the right. Now we'll face the camera. Okay. And now we're going to look at another overhead motion called abduction. So he's going to come in like a jumping jack without the jump. Okay. Palms there up overhead. Palms up. Yep. Ooh, and I'm going to push. And any pain there? 
No, not too bad. So he doesn't have any significant loss of motion, but a little bit of hiking of the shoulder on the left where it kind of is hiking up to his ear to compensate. Okay, now I'll let you face, turn your back to the camera. We're going to look at some rotational movements of the shoulder. So let's do your right one first. Reach behind your back like you're trying to touch your opposite shoulder. So he's good here. He's right between his shoulder blades, which is good movement. Like I'm being handcuffed, right? Yeah, like would you're know being handcuffed. Like. Not that I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and no pain on that side or any pain? Not too, a little tight. A little tight. tight. Okay, so we'll put that one down. Now we'll do your right hand. Good. See, so he actually has a little bit less on his right. Okay, and relax. But any pain or tightness there? A little tight. A little yeah. tight. Okay. And then the last one, we're going to reach behind your head like you're trying to scratch your back between the oh. shoulder blades. Or one arm tricep extension, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're about to do a tricep extension. There you go. Relax. So he's at <sighs> about the center point of his neck. Now let's come here. Oh boy. <laughs> and that's where he's definitely limited. So can he barely can barely get head. to the back of his head with his left one. And where do you feel that? Uh, in the, I guess that'd be the front to side of the shoulder. Okay. All right. So relax. So we've kind of looked at his motion. We've seen where he's limited, where he's a little painful and tight. So he was complaining about right here being a little tight. How about here in the lats? A little bit a there. A little bit there. Yeah, a little bit okay. in the front. Okay. So the front and the lats. So now we're going to kind of work on some of those tissues and see if we can work on loosening up the tissues first with the instrument assisted, then we're going to do some cupping to help get further decompression and get that blood flow in there to help improve the movement pattern. And then we'll tape it and do some, see how you're moving post. Okay. So right. we're going to use what we call it's rock sauce. It's got a little bit of pain relieving cream in it. It'll actually help the muscle warm up. So you get that warming feeling, which will help the muscle calm down a little, but you can use coconut oil, any type of uh, cream to kind of decrease the friction between the tool. So we're going to use the rock sauce. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit on you. I feel a little tightness in the front of the shoulder too. Is that part so, of the issue that yep, I'm having? So probably yeah. what you're feeling is a lot of the biceps yeah. comes in and here right and your here. pecs come in here. Yep. And then a lot of times people will have that lat. Yep, you're on. Um, and the muscle <laughs> right here, part of your, called your teres will come in and your mm -hmm. lat in and that'll get really tight. Yep. So that combination of tightness will hinder that movement pattern, especially wow. behind your head. So in the front and in the back, mm -hmm. right through there. Yep. Wow. And areas. that's exactly where, where I have the issues. So what I'm going to do first is get the cream in. We're going to do that feathering technique, get him used to the tool. He's already felt it, so he knows what it feels like. I trust her. Yeah, you trust me. <laughs> so we get the cream all in. All right. And I'm lightly, very lightly touching him. Yeah. So he should feel like it's a feather on you. Like there shouldn't yeah. be much pressure. You let me know though, because no, every patient is going to be different. Patients that are in pain, remember, their perception is kind of miscued. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll do this and patients tell me it feels like I'm pressing into them like a 10. 10 would be the highest pressure. So you have to just, it's patient discretion. All right. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper, okay? Mm -hmm. So normally we scale it, zero would be no pressure, one would be that feathering, 10 would be, I know it sounds crazy, I'm ripping the muscle off your bone. We want this to be about a four to a five pressure. How does that feel? Feels good. Okay. So we're just doing basic. I'm not even putting you in a stretch yet. Yeah, well that's great right there, wow. Yep. Stuff smells good too. Yeah. That's what's it called? Rock? Rock sauce. Rock sauce. Okay, we're gonna get back here first. So okay. Easy way to do this in this position take your right hand, grab your left wrist, and pull across your body like okay. you're doing a little stretch on there. You should feel that pull here. You feel With that? With the arm straight? The With the arm straight, straight the okay. left arm, yep. Oh, yeah. So I just have them in a little more of a stretch while I'm doing the instrument assisted so I can get a little more of that tissue. Release. Can you feel where the tear was? A lot of times with this, you can feel what we call fibrotic tissue. You can mm. feel the difference. That like you'll have a smooth feel, then all of a sudden you'll get to a tight, crackling feeling, and that's what we call the fibrotic tissue. The tissue that's just tight, mm -hmm. um, ischemic, so there's not a lot of blood. Like right in there, I can feel yep, some crunches. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you, it's pretty cool how you don't lose the um, tactile perception using the tool. 
you can still feel the tissue. Wow, like it kind of, does it vibrate through the tool? Mm -hmm. is that you can kind feel of it, a, yeah. So it's cool. just like with your hands. Sometimes mm -hmm. I actually think I feel it better with a tool than I do with my hands. Interesting. Yeah. So we get all that loosened up. Yeah, so you, can you feel that? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's probably more my tricep that's tore when I had that, that tear. Yeah, or it's just that tricep is acting up as a matter of Result. the tightness here. So remember all the other muscles, that fascial chain. Yeah, so you, upstream and downstream. Yep, upstream, downstream. So normally with the instrument assisted, now you can relax. You don't just focus on one area. You're gonna ripple below and above because your muscles function in what we call fascial chains. So if I pull on his shirt on this side, you're gonna have movement on the opposite hip. So if you turn that way, so if I pull here, it moves here. So that's how literally what your muscles do. So if you're tight here, it's gonna affect here. So all over is gonna be affected just through a fascial chain. So I'm gonna let you cross your arm again and do your stretch. That's a great way to explain it, right? You pull on your shirt on one corner, it moves in the other corner. <laughs> That's great. Oh yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of different positions I can have you in. Mm -hmm. This is just simple for right now. Have you in standing. I could have you lying down on your right side with your arm over your head to get a bigger stretch on that lat. Mm -hmm. Tissue's tissue. You're just going to have to, some patients who are a little larger or who have, you know, where the tissue's kind of on top, you just kind of move that tissue and you can still work in that area. So, I mean, we, with patients who are older, who have um, a little more frail skin, mm. that's when we would do the ask about the pressure. Um, so I would do feathering. It's great at exposure. You never just take the tool and throw it on somebody, okay? Right. So with patients, all skin types, we can do the instrument assisted on. It's just, you always ask the patient, how's the pressure? Yeah, and then you look at their skin. If they're turning red immediately, okay, we don't really need to be doing this right now. Let's do another technique. Instrument assisted, we put aside for now. We can do gradual with the hand. We can just do some stretching. So it's all patient perception. Nice. Right. Now I'm going to put you in a functional stretch for that lat, then we'll get that front. Okay. So what we'll do, so see if you can get in, oh, like a modified okay. downward dog. So I don't have to get you all the way in child's pose. So no. I'm putting him in a more functional stretch position. So we're getting in kind of like a modified downward dog. Sometimes you can go in a prayer stretch or a child's pose. That way, you feel that on that lat? Oh yeah, yeah. I was just gonna mention yeah. that. Yeah. That way you're actually wow. stretching that muscle we're trying to work so that lats can be stretched more now. While ago, we were working that cross arm stretch. We're working more on what we call like your middle delt, the tricep, um, the back of the shoulder, what we call your posterior cuff. Now we're really hitting that lat. Yeah. You can That's already good. tell sometimes when people are tight in their lats. That limits overhead movement a lot. So yeah, I'm like in a downward dog position, similar to like the yoga. Um, my hands are on the table and I'm bending over at the waist and Christina's really getting into my lat, uh, the side of my back, right under my left arm and she's got the spot, man, and that's mm. great. <laughs> Yep, deep breaths in through I'm nose, just gonna breathe with it. out through your mouth, yep. Like when you have that feeling like a really tight muscle and you're stretching it and it feels good, that's what this feels like right now to me. And I, as you might guess, I have a lot of issues with that area that you're on uh, from the tear where I was doing weighted pull-ups years ago. And right now I'm doing that down regulation technique I was telling you about mm -hmm. to decrease that muscle tone, kind of calm it down. So I'm kind of going deep, that four to five pressure, remember Garrett? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going for at least 30 seconds across that area because this is a long, deep movement to calm that muscle down. He's okay. happy. <laughs> okay, and I'll let you happy stand muscle. up, get out okay. of that position for a little bit. Okay, so we did a little <laughs> tissue there. All right, now we're gonna work on that pec and that bicep. Okay. So, Sometimes I'll have patients lay down and I'll work on it. Mm -hmm. um, for you, we'll try that internal rotation. So reach okay. behind, up, okay, and then we'll come through. And again, I'm gonna start off a little gentle, then I'm gonna go a little deeper. So you just let me know how the pressure feels. Right now, how's that pressure? That's great. Okay. Okay, if I hold on to the side of the yeah, table here, standing, okay, on. good. That's a spot I have a lot of trouble with. So that's the front of my left shoulder. Christina's working on. Yeah, we're getting in 
kind of what we call those pec muscles, your chest muscles, and that bicep area, the front of his shoulder. That commonly gets tight and it'll pull the shoulder forward in the joint, mm -hmm. up and forward and cause that limited overhead movement and it can cause what we call impingement in the shoulder. In which we, in the gym, call the bench presser pose. The oh, guys that yes. walk around like they have a loaf of bread under each arm. <laughs> now relax it. Good. And Christina, is this the reason why, like in the gym, we hear so many uh, people tearing their biceps or tearing their pecs? Is this kind of a the kind of spot that we're talking about? Yes, definitely, right in there. So usually you'll hear guys, their bicep will just, mm -hmm. when they're yeah. benching too heavy, yep, sure. that's the spot. The long head of the biceps runs in here. Now, I'm going to put you in one more spot Sure. So for a stretch. So we're gonna be here, mm -hmm. and you know the stretch where yep. you're turning around. So I'm just gonna have him rest his hand on an object that's about shoulder height, for him a little lower than shoulder, he's tall. And he's just gonna hold his arm straight and rotate the body away to stretch the front, those chest muscles and that okay. bicep. Palm down? Palm down, yeah. Okay. And you should feel the stretch there, okay. yep. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna work the tool into that stretch. Yeah, breathe. And again, I'm going to keep asking him, how's that pressure? That's great. It, it really feels good, actually. Oh, yeah, the crunching's happening. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I'm feeling the, the crunches, what I call like Rice Krispies. Yep. That's that fibrotic tissue where it's tight. It's kind of adhered uh, down. We're going to try to get that tissue to basically loosen up, improve the glide. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, you know, obviously there's a little bit of pain involved, but to me, it almost feels like um, when you have an itch that you just can't scratch, and then this feels like scratching it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll say the feel good pain. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when people get the deep massage, deep mm -hmm. tissue massage, yep. Get those endorphins going, right? Mm hmm. There so, we go. See, that feels yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so as crunchy. You, and do you relax. think that's a lot of that's in my bicep? Do you think that's part of what's making the shoulder tight? Yeah, a lot of it can wow. be just from past injuries. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you're in pain, past injuries, you're going to impair movement. Right. So your body's going to find a way mm -hmm. to move, so it's going to move incorrectly. Right. So it's got to move. It's got to try its best yeah. to work, especially when you're lifting. Mm -hmm. So you're, you might not even realize that you're moving impaired. Like your right. overhead movement is limited, and you might not even realize mm -hmm. it. So you saw your left, well, you couldn't see, but... It didn't even get past your ear a while ago. Your mm -hmm. right got past your ear. Right. And then definitely your external was limited. So we've done a lot of the instrument assisted. Now we're going to work with the fun cups. All right. Okay. <laughs> so with the cups, we do what's called graded exposure as well. Okay. Um, so normally with patients, what I would do is introduce them to the cup, put it on their skin. The suction method is the easiest. You literally just put it on and suction. There's not as much negative wow. pressure, not as much pull. Mm -hmm. Then once they get used to it, I can do what's called the inversion. I just flip it inside out, right. put it on there, and you should feel more suction right. now. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I would work with my patients, let them feel it, see how they respond. The first treatment, I would do what's called just stationary cupping, mm -hmm. which they're just kind of there and I'm cupping and I can move the tissue. Okay. okay? With you, I want to go ahead and do cupping with movement. Okay, because okay? that would be the next step. You add in movement with the cups. So you're getting glide from the cup and you're getting internal glide from you, your body. They look like baby plungers. Yeah, so for people that can't see, they literally are it little does. baby plungers. Yep, yeah, like a plunger yep. without a handle. Yep, <laughs> and literally when you put it on there, suction's on, pull up on the plunger, and it suctions to the skin. So what we'll have Garrett do, I'm going to let you reach behind your back again. Okay, okay. I'm going to get that stretch. Put it right here on the front. You feel that wow, little plunge? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Now come to the back to the machine. Okay. And we're gonna do that bicep stretch again, where he's Hold just turning down. his body. Yep. Stretching. There you go. Yep. Here. So I have one cup on my left shoulder and one cup on my bicep. So I've got one. Yep. Right there on the front of the shoulder wow. on his bicep. I'm gonna put one a little farther down on his bicep. So there's two on his bicep now. One on the front of his shoulder, and I'm gonna put one right here on your pec. Like your chest muscle. There you go. Cool. Okay. So now what you're gonna do is a tissue glide. So you're gonna rotate into that stretch. Okay. Count to ten. ten back off a little. Eight, and then rotate again. So 
Okay. So we'll do that for now. Let's just do five of them. Two, one. Back yep, and then back off. Suction we'll cups in. are still on there. Yep. Normally with the suction cups, you do not want to leave them on there more than 90 seconds. Usually it's 30 to 90 seconds. Um, if you leave them on there longer, you're going to cause too much of a hemostatic response or, you know, you're going to get too much of that blood flow in there. You want to take it, take them off after about 90 seconds. Cool. That's with this type of patients. technique. That's fine. Put it back on there. I'll make it suction a little more. There we go. 10. Good. That's four. One more time for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's 5. Excellent. And then when I take them off, I just put my fingers up underneath the suction cup. and. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, they leave a cool mark, yep. too. So wow. right now he's got little red circles. Um, some of them are a little more purple. The purple, they want us that dark purple. Mm -hmm. That means you can relax. That's okay. an area of greater stagnation, like where it's air of greater tightness. Those tissues yeah. are adhered down more, so you don't have as much blood flow. So now we just pulled all that blood in, mm -hmm. so it's a little more purple there. So you can definitely tell that's a hot spot yep. for you. And These, you can, you can barely even see the other one. Right. This one's definitely a hot spot. Well, that's amazing. You can see the difference. And exactly where the darker purple spot is is where I have most yep. of my mm -hmm. pain. So yeah. that's usually what we call a hot spot. So wow. that's your spot. Okay. Now, so we did the bicep, and we did a, what we call your pec, your chest muscle. Now we're going to hit that lat, and then we'll reassess everything. Cool. Um, I'll tape you and kind of reassess again. We'll reassess before I tape, and then we'll reassess after tape too. Okay? Very All cool. Right. Thanks, So Christina. for your lat, what we're going to try, we'll get in that downward dog okay. position again. Uh, for you, I'd rather have a higher surface but because of the camera. Right. Yeah. yeah. So okay. same thing. You're just going to go down. Okay. You can hold this one for just five seconds. Okay. Come and back out I'll... a little. Okay. And repeat. Okay. So gotcha. that first stretch is when I'm gonna put him on cool. there. Okay. So now he's in that kind of modified downward dog. His hands are on the table. He's bending over. I'm gonna put one here, kind of along the tricep area, and then I'm gonna put one around the armpit where the lat comes in, kind of on the outside of the armpit area. Okay. And then I'm gonna put one right here on his lat. And again, I have my hands on the table, uh, bent over at the waist. You feel that good pull? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So hold it for that five and then just back off a little and repeat. We'll do that one ten times. And back down in position. Mm -hmm. You still feel the stretch? Yeah. Yeah, good. Five, two, back down. One. So this is how we incorporate movement with the techniques. When you're doing therapy, you don't want a patient to be stationary every treatment. You want them to be able to get to move and reinforce that movement pattern. So we're adding in the external glide from the cup and the internal glide from the patient doing the stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Two more. And you can tell he's getting a little more mobile. I had to move that table back some because his butt was getting One, closer. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Was that eight or nine? Nine. <laughs> nine. One, One, two, three, four, five, ten. Yeah, I can feel it. I'm more mobile. Oh, yeah. You want me up Good. or down? You can come up. So that's wow. movement with cupping. And then even another step, the next step would be movement with me moving cups. But we don't really have to do that today. You can just look. So, because you can assess tissue movement with the cup. So, if you stay facing that oh, camera, I'll kind of explain. Mm -hmm. So, if I take the cup and you see the big purple spot, for those people that can't see, again, that's a hot spot. It's nice and purple. The other circle is pretty much barely even there now. So, that's one of your hot spots, too, around where that lat comes in and connects. Yep. So, if I put a cup on his uh, shoulder here, all right, do your cross arm stretch. You can assess movement of the tissue. So I can go clockwise, counterclockwise, and he doesn't move as well counterclockwise. And you can also go into vector this way. Here, see you move pretty good there. You don't move that well there. I can Up, feel the down. difference. Yeah. So use the cups for assessment as well, okay? So you can assess where you're tight, what motion you're tight in, the different vectors, and we can actually do moving those vectors while you move or even while you're stationary. 
So it's pretty cool. Working that's the really Look at your cool. other hot spot around that and, lat. And that's Perfect. Spot there's your hot spots. Tightness. Yep. That's so, awesome. All right. So we're going to reassess movement. Okay. Okay. So let's face that way again. Okay. So good posture. All right. So raise that left arm up all the way. Look, he's behind his ear. Good. All right. Back down. Okay. Now face the wall because you were limited with your external definitely. Mm -hmm. So reach behind again. Try to touch behind the head. Look at that. Wow. Nice. I can barely touch my head yeah, before. Yeah, so now earlier he was right collar. here at the top of his head. Now he's down here at the base of his neck. Wow. So excellent improvement. That's awesome. Nice. Thanks, yes. Man. So wow. now we can reinforce that. Right. So we'll do the tape. And then normally I would go in to corrective exercise. Okay, but cool. But let's tape you. Okay. Right on. So when you put tape on, you never really stretch the tape unless you're using it for like decompression. Okay. You stretch the tissue, the muscle, okay? So what we're gonna do, I want you to reach behind your back. Okay. I'll measure the tape first. We're gonna come around here, okay? All right, you can relax. Okay, now does the tape stick on top of the rock sauce? Or yes, do you have to this, take that off? this rock sauce it does. Um, this is a, it evaporates, okay. okay? This type of sauce does. If you're using coconut oil, you can relax. I want you to, if you're using coconut oil or any type of other oil, you're gonna to wanna to use alcohol to wipe it off, okay? So clean the skin first, that's the key. For this, because it evaporates, mm -hmm. we, can, we can use that. But definitely clean the skin first, all right, with alcohol, if you have lotion on or if you use coconut oil or anything, all right, because it's gonna affect that adhesive quality of the tape. So we always round the edges, because if you leave them square, they're gonna catch on your clothing. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. very So smart. now reach across through that cross arm stretch. Come around here and we'll get into that middle delt. You can relax. All right. So we're going to hit kind of wrapping around the front of the shoulder okay. right, to give input into kind of where that pec, like your chest sure. muscle yeah. and your bicep. Okay. And then we're going to hit the back of your shoulder, what we call that posterior cuff area. Mm -hmm. And it kind of actually gives your shoulder a little bit of input, oh, like a feeling of stability. All right. And that third strip after I do this is going to be for where you're really tight around that tricep going into the lat to give that normalized tissue tone. Remember, it'll yep. kind of tell your brain, hey, let's calm down if I'm really tight, mm -hmm. all right? So the fun part, so cool. then, then we get to see how you're moving after. I mean, you're not gonna have really improvement, but I wanna make sure you can move with the tape the and movement. prove that the yeah. tape moves with you. So that's the cool thing about this tape. It's not medical tape. It doesn't, it doesn't cause your joint to stay stationary. You're gonna be able to move, it moves with you, okay? So it's flexible. Yes, after about, a day, you're gonna note. You're not even gonna notice it's on you. You're gonna be, okay. Oh yeah, I have tape on. Yeah. So let's right. reach behind your back. Okay. And remember, I'm not really putting any stretch on the tape. I'm just laying it down, tape on, okay. pressure. All right. And you definitely just lay the ends down. Never ever stretch the ends. Okay. And you always rub it. Body heat activates the stickiness, that adhesive quality of it. Okay. So now relax. So this is the front. Okay. Now let's do your cross arm stretch. So okay. he's pulling that left arm across his body. Don't shrug, keep that shoulder down. Good. All right. And because I'm short, <laughs> I'm gonna you stand up bend, here. For kneel me. down. Come here. All right. Yeah. Right here. And I'm gonna come around, circle around that shoulder. And you never end tape on tape. So you always okay. have to be on skin because it needs something to adhere to. And the adhesive in the tape is activated by body heat? Yep, so when you rub, it makes it stickier. Okay, now we'll get that fun spot, that lat tricep area. Okay, so let me measure. You need the shirt off? Uh, we should be able to keep it on. So a lot of times, um, they teach you how you can do stuff with shirt on, but if I needed to get to you, mm. what I would do is take patient to the eval room gotcha. and have them take their shirt off. Especially females, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, for this one, you can get in the basic tricep stretch where you're okay. pulling back. So he's reaching that left hand behind him, reaching between the shoulder blades, stretching, and now now lean that way. There you feel that stretch. Which is much better than when we started. <laughs> yes. That's a lot better, Garrett. Yeah. Man, aren't you glad you came? Garrett? I am so glad we came. <laughs> I love being able to see, especially when you see that quick progress like that. And it helps the patient realize, hey, 
I can get better, you know? I'm not stuck here. Okay. All right, now relax it. Yeah, any, any little victory, uh, I think, especially when you're dealing with chronic pain, is huge. Oh, you know? yeah. You can really see your passion for what you do, Christina. It really shows. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Now, raise up and it shouldn't hinder you. No. Yeah. Yeah. Feels yeah. Perfect. So we got the tape on there. And then what I would do normally, typically, in a rehab situation, I would take you through corrective exercises. Right. Like I would move you through some scapular strengthening, teach yeah. those shoulders to sit back, you know, mm -hmm. postural strengthening exercises. Sure. I would work you into a little of that overhead stretching. Okay. Um, we do a different stretch for the pecs and uh, lats, mm -hmm. like a more stationary long hold. Okay. But I so that would be that the stuff. that would be yeah. the next step, like the carryover, and that's when why you really need to see someone that kind of knows what they're doing when it comes to exercise mm -hmm. to show you the next step. Hey, we did all the fun tools. Now what? Okay, Let's yeah. Keep it going. So Let's keep it going. Reinforce the new movement mm -hmm. and reinforce a good movement pattern. So yeah, gotcha. yeah, awesome. it feels good. Thanks, yes, man. It feels definitely. Great. Yeah. And now I have to work on my stretches. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, but that's great that we saw that, that improvement. Huge. Yeah, yeah. It's I so love exciting. it. Yeah, and imagine if we did the true like 20 to 30 minutes that yeah. we'll kind of spin on that manual. So a little bit longer. Um, I, normally I would kind of have you laying down, do a little more, so we could even see more improvement. Yeah. Oh, that's so, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah, you know, I always say the one negative side effect to working out and to being active is that things wear out. But the more you can work on recovery, the more you can work on correcting those things, the better movement patterns you have, the longer you're going to have to oh, use yeah. those joints. It's and not those about how much can you lift or how, he you know, how mm -hmm. heavy can I go? Can I do that correctly? Yeah. You might need to back off your weight. And mm -hmm. that's the good thing about if you're in pain, if you're injured, or if you're moving incorrectly, mm -hmm. coming to a specialist, like a physical therapist, we show you how to move correctly, right. carry that over into whatever your sport, mm -hmm. whatever your lift technique is, we can carry that over and teach you the correct mechanics to prevent that re-injury. Right. So, yeah. Right. Oh, it's All so right. awesome. Well, thank you for everything, right, Christina. You're That's awesome. Fun. I can see yeah. already that we're going to have to continue. We're going to have to have you back and we're going to have to go to the next phases and talk about more of what you guys do yeah. here at the clinic. It's really oh, awesome. Yeah. Can you give us a quick recap of what we did here today? Yeah, definitely. So first we kind of went over the instrument assisted. So just using a tool to help improve tissue mobility, um, kind of like a massage technique with the tool. Then we did the cupping, the little suction cups that look like plungers. We did it over those muscles where you were feeling tight during movement. All right. Then we reassessed your movement. We saw a tremendous Big improvement difference. and your ability to reach behind you and your overhead reach. So those cleaned up pristinely. Those looked good. Then we added in tape, the uh, tape component, to kind of continue to reinforce that for the next three to five days. Like keep those muscles normalized tone help you keep that new movement in control for the next three to five days. And I'll work those stretches. Oh, yeah, right. that will be the next step, the corrective exercises. So Christina, thank you for being on the Bolt for Life podcast. Now, if somebody saw something that they like here, something that they want to try, what would be the next step? The next step would be you can either contact us locally um, here in Wallace. Our clinic is Vidant Outpatient Rehab, and you can give us a call at 910-285-1799. And my name is Christina Pate. Um, you can also kind of look up, contact the physical therapy clinic, ask if they have anyone that's cupping or instrument assisted or tape certified so you can make sure you're dealing with a specialist. If you want to do specific like the rock tape technique, you can go online to rocktape.com and they actually have a section where you can look up um, that were called rock docs. <laughs> So you can look us up and see providers in your area that are actually certified in these techniques. Um, that'll give you a quick link. But you don't necessarily have to go rock tape. Um, there's different types of instruments, um, different brands, different brands of tape, different cups. It's mainly the concept behind it. You know, we talked about the pain mitigation, alleviating pain through that pain gate theory using the tools, the decompressive effect, and that brain to muscle or body part connection that the tools provide. So they don't necessarily have to be rock, tape, brands. They can be any type of instrument, tape, or cups. It's the concept behind it. And using it in conjunction with physical therapy um, to reiterate the movement pattern. 
for me and dealing with my chronic pain, I feel like any little thing that helps, and this, this helps, you know, helps my overall well-being. It helps what I can do. For somebody that's interested in trying this, I mean, what, what can you say to them that, that might help them in order to, to give this a try or do something to help improve their life? So there's a lot of evidence-based research out um, on these techniques, so it's not just theory. There's evidence. Uh, there's actually a lot of research out on not just acute injuries, but chronic pain in itself and how these techniques truly do help with that pain control and that movement pattern. Uh, there's actual studies that show using ultrasound, the physiological changes in the tissue when you're using these techniques. So there's evidence out there. So if you have any apprehension, you can look up evidence on rock tech techniques, the instrument assisted techniques are cupping and how it affects or helps with chronic pain you'll find a lot of research out there, um, evidence-based research. So that might help with your apprehension, give you an idea of, hey, here's uh, X amount of people, I mean, thousands of people, millions of people in these research studies that have had positive effects from the techniques. So there is hope out there. There's, you have faith, there's hope. We've seen with Garrick, we've already had improvement just with this quick technique. Mm -hmm. So, and for yeah. me, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, if you feel better, you feel better. Yeah, I mean, that's, definitely. You know, that, yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> if you feel better, you move better. And that carries over into your lifestyle. That's so you're right. actually able to perform your daily activities with improved ease. You can go back in the gym and do yeah. your lifting. So, I mean, that's the truth in the pudding, like yeah. you said. So. And that's, I mean, the whole goal of the Bull for Life podcast is to live a full life and thrive with chronic pain, whatever that means for each individual person. And I love how you talked about dealing with each individual case and each indi yeah. individual person. And I know here at your clinic, you give the patients a lot of time, and I, I love to see that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You have to, each person or each patient is an individual in themselves. They could, you could come in with the same shoulder surgery but I'm gonna treat you a little differently because you have different goals, that person has different goals. Your movement pattern might completely be different than that movement. So everybody's an individual. You can't do cookie cutter treatment. Thanks again, Christina. We yeah, appreciate indeed. it, man. Thank you so much. It was fun. Thanks. Yeah, and I feel better. Yeah, that's a, that's a positive. <laughs> right? Dr. Christina Pate, you are Bolt for Life. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you listening to Bolt for Life. Our goal is to help you or anyone that you might know to live and thrive with chronic pain. And you can help us out by subscribing or giving us a review on iTunes or anywhere else that you hear Bolt for Life. If you guys have any ideas, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us at info at boltforlife, B-U-L-T-F-O-R, life.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Bolt for Life. Thanks again. This is Garrett Bolt for Bolt for Life.